class. Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and I'm really excited today to talk to you about a topic that has been troublesome, historically speaking, because we're going to talk about instantaneous speed. Speed at an instant. How in the world are we going to measure speed at an instant in time? And historically, it proved problematic. We'll get to that later. But first, just to set the stage to try to make this come to life for you a little bit, I'd like you to imagine that you're watching the Olympic Games and the event you're watching is the 100 meter dash, the sprint. The runners are lined up at the starting line, the gun goes off and the runners sprint down towards the finish line. And just for the sake of our discussion here today, I've created a hypothetical situation where that has happened and we're gonna keep track of distance from the starting line as a function of the time elapsed in the race. And just for ease of computation, let's say that in this particular race, the, uh, the runner we're tracking finished the race in 10 seconds. That is, they ran 100 meters in exactly 10 seconds. And so we might ask the question, well, how fast did this runner run? Well, we could answer that question by saying, the runner ran 100 meters in 10 seconds. And to be honest, that is a perfectly legitimate way to, to communicate how fast this runner ran. He ran 100 meters per 10 seconds. It's just not a very typical or common or conventional way to report a speed. Think about if you're in your car and you want to know how fast you're going, you look at your speedometer, which is measured in miles per one hour. Or in this case, we might want to communicate not meters per 10 seconds, but meters per one second. And so let's, let's, let's do that. Let's figure out how fast he ran per second. So not 10 seconds, but one second. So we have to look at these two quantities, the distance that he ran and the time that it took him and think proportionally. So we're going to go from 10 seconds to one second. That's one tenth the time means he's going to travel one tenth the distance and one tenth of a hundred meters would be 10 meters. So we could say that this runner ran 10 meters per second, but did he always run 10 meters per second? This is over a 10 second period, the entire race. Does he run 10 meters per second from the moment the gun sounds to the time he crosses the finish line? Let's explore that. I have some hypothetical data here. Let's, let's pretend that we knew where the runner was every two seconds for the first four, and we know his halfway mark. We say we paused the video and we determined that after five seconds he had run 40 meters and etc. So we can use this information, we can explore how fast is he running at different moments in this race. For instance, maybe we wanna know how fast did he run during the first half of the race in terms of the time. So in the first five seconds, he ran from zero to 40 meters. That is, he ran 40 meters in five seconds. And again, we could say that's how fast he ran, 40 meters per five seconds. That's just not a conventional way to speak. We want to convert it to a one second interval to be conventional. And so we look at the relationship here between the distances and the times and we say, if in five seconds he ran 40 meters, then in one-fifth the time, he would run one-fifth the distance. So one-fifth of 40 meters would be eight meters. So eight meters per second. Now remember, over the course of the whole race, he ran as if he was at a constant speed of 10 meters per second. But in the first half of the race, he was running at a constant speed, hypothetically, of just eight meters per second. But that didn't even persist. That's just an average over the first five seconds of the race. Suppose we wanted to narrow in even more and we wanted to look at the first two seconds of the race. What do you think? Do you think he was running faster than 10 meters per second or eight meters per second or slower? We can find out. In the first two seconds of the race, he ran 13.6 meters. And in that two seconds and 13.6 meters, we could just pause there and say, he ran 13.6 meters per two seconds. Or more likely, more conventionally, we would convert that to a one second interval of time. In half the time, he would run half the distance. And half of 13.6 is 6.8. 
So in the first two seconds, he's running 6.8 meters per second. And we could just narrow in and narrow in and narrow in, and that's what we're going to do, is we're going to find out how fast was he running, not over 10 or 8 or even 2 seconds, but how fast was he running at just an instant in time. So let's say we want to look at even a smaller instance of time, instant in time than 10 or 5 or even 2 seconds. Say we want to know how fast was he traveling in the first one-tenth of a second. To do that, suppose we were able to represent the data and the graph that you saw earlier as a function. And because of that increasing speed over time, maybe a quadratic function would be best. And again, for the sake of this video, I made things come out a little nice. And so the quadratic function that models that situation is this one here. But I want to use this function now to get at the idea of how do we find out how fast was he traveling at just a very short interval of time. So let's look at the first tenth of a second. So when time is zero, so the initial moment in the race, Notice if t is zero, the distance traveled is zero, which I hope makes sense. He's still at the starting line. But let's look and see, where was the runner one-tenth of a second later? So if you were to rep uh, replace the time with one-tenth of a second, do the computations, we get approximately 0.604. That is... The runner traveled 0.604 meters in that tenth of a second. And again, we could stop right there and say that's his speed. 0.604 meters in one tenth of a second. But that's not conventional. We would probably want to represent it more conventionally. Well, what would that be over the course of one second? Again, thinking proportionally, one second is 10 one tenths of a second. So that is we scaled up the time by a factor of 10 to keep the quantities in proportion. We'll have to scale up the distance by a factor of 10. So 0 0.604 meters times 10 would be 6.04 meters. Now we would say in the first tenth of a second, the runner traveled 6.04, just a little over six meters per second. Now we could do that over a smaller interval of time and a smaller interval of time and a smaller interval of time, or we could look at different places in the race. Like what about what's happening at the end of the race? What's happening as he's crossing the finish line? So let's look at the last tenth of a second of this race. That is, let's find out where was the runner 9.9 .9 seconds after he started the race. Remember, he finished the race at 10 seconds, so we're just going to look at that last tenth of a second. So, if you replace time with 9.9 .9 seconds, we find out that he was 98.604 meters down the, down the, the, the track. At 10 meters, at uh, 10 seconds, sorry, we know that he finished the race. He ran the full 100 meters. So again, we want to look at how far did he run in that last tenth of a second. Well, 98.604 to 100 meters, that is a 1.396. So he ran the last almost 1.4 meters in one tenth of a second. Let's scale that up so that we see what happens in one full second. One second is 10 times one tenth of a second. So if we scale the time up by a factor of 10, we would scale the distance up by a factor of 10. That would be 13.96. So now we could say, as he's crossing the finish line, well, at least in that last tenth of a second that he's crossing the finish line, we could say that he's running 13.96, almost 14 meters per second. Now you can arbitrarily pick a, a change in time here that's as small as you desire. The smaller you make that change in time, the more instantaneous your reporting of his speed will be. So for example, suppose you wanted to know how fast was he running at that five second point in the race. So what we could do is say this. The distance after five seconds we know was 40 meters from our table earlier. 
Let's look at a, a point in time, just a smidgen in time later. And notice I'm being very uh, ambiguous in my language there, a smidgen of time. That can be as small as you desire. I'm gonna make it 5.0001. So like just in a blink of an eye later, where is this runner? So if you replace T with 5.0001 and do the computations, you will get 40.001. So what we're saying is, in that tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, in one ten thousandth of a second, the runner ran 0 0.001 meters. Let me record that. 0 0.001 meters in one ten thousandth of a second. And then, so again, we have this, uh, this computation or this proportional reasoning that we need to engage in. One ten thousandth of a second. To scale that up to one full second, we have to have 10,000 of these. So if the time is scaled up by a factor of 10,000, then the distance would be scaled up by a factor of 10,000. So if you multiply this by 10,000, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, we would get 10 meters from one second. We can do this at any moment in time that we like. We can find out where he was at this moment. We can find out where he was an instant later. And we can say, how far did he run in that amount of time? Scale it up by a factor of whatever it is. And we can say, we can report that at that moment in time, the runner is running that speed. So to wrap up this idea of instantaneous speed, speed at a moment, here's really what we're doing is we are choosing some moment in time that we are interested in, in finding this person's speed. We'll call that time t sub one. And then we're gonna look just a, a, a moment later. And for the sake of variables right now, we're gonna call that moment later h. So we're just gonna add a little tiny moment in time later and we will compute how far he ran. We'll compare that to where the runner was at that initial moment in time. To do that, what we saw in our previous computations was we took this distance and we subtracted this distance. That subtraction tells us how far he ran in that one change in time of h seconds. Once we figured that out, we then had to scale it Sometimes if it was a two seconds, we had to cut in half. If it was one tenth of a second, we had to scale it up by a factor of 10. But in general, we just divide by that change in time and we will determine how fast was the runner running at that moment, t sub one. Now we're gonna look at the theory and the historical dilemma of how do we make time even smaller and smaller and smaller, and you're gonna learn about infinitesimal change in time. Thank you.